Non-stop breaking news on this dramatic developing story on what's happening in Maharashtra between Mumbai and Guwahati. It's non-stop. Here's the latest breaking news that we're getting in. The Shinde Sena, the rebel Sena has swelled. It has become stronger in Guwahati. Meanwhile, there is a mad scramble in their hometown of Mumbai. Back-to-back -back meetings are taking place in Maharashtra state capital. Congress leaders will be meeting very shortly on an emergency Chintan Baitak to make sure that they don't come out of this more burnt than anticipated. There's a huge churn on in the Congress camp to ensure that they can keep their flock together after the Shiv Sena has been split wide open by rebel leader Eknath Shinde. After Sanjay Raut, Udhav Thakre's Man Friday Sanjay Raut statement about exiting the Mahavikas Agadi, the Congress is planning to formulate another strategy on what comes next. This is an every man and woman for themselves kind of situation for the three allies of the Mahavikas Agadi right now. The Shiv Sena split wide open, the Pawar Sena, as it were, the MCP, figuring out how they could have been hoodwinked in this terrible manner. And the Congress, which is a powerless spectator, pretty much just waiting to see how this unfolds for them in the one state, or rather one of a few states, where they still are part of the government. But the defining image of the day today have been these two images which completely expose and debunk the entire kidnapping claim that came forward from the Shiv Sena today. Shiv Sena MLA Nitin Deshmukh claimed that he had been abducted by the rebel leaders of Eknath Shinde's faction and taken forcibly away from Mumbai and that he had returned of his own volition to support the Udhav faction. In response, the rebel faction released pictures of MLA Nitin Deshmukh grinning widely, appearing to go completely voluntarily in a super luxury private jet on that flight from Surat to Guwahati. Incredible Tutu Meme claim versus counterclaim on the back of a very serious allegation that MLAs had been kidnapped. The rebel leader saying, what kidnapping? He came smiling with us in a private jet. All we had to do was tell him to come with us. And here he is at this super luxury aircraft in which he was flown. So let's quickly first get into the top developments that we're tracking right now. The Maharashtra government collapse appears to be on the horizon. The Shinde Sena has put up a huge show of strength, flaunting all 42 MLAs, that includes seven independent MLAs, posing for the first time in the same frame. Earlier this morning, three more Sena rebel MLAs landed in Guwahati. With that, the Shinde Sena now has 38 Shiv Sena rebels with them. That is enough to evade the anti-defection law of the country. Meanwhile, in Mumbai, only 13 Sena MLAs, embarrassingly low number, 13 Sena MLAs turned up for the Shiv Sena meeting. The 13 included Udhav's son, Aditya Thakre. Sharad Pawar, in his meeting with the NCP Netas, gave a big signal about the possibility that defeat is afoot. He told his senior leaders that they should be ready for a political struggle if they lose power in the next few days. The Shinde Sena sitting in Guwahati is getting ready to stake claim. Sources are telling India today that Shinde will be reaching out to the governor to declare a two-thirds majority at this time. Huge 
war over the rebels has erupted amidst this high voltage drama in Maharashtra. Two Udhav Sena MLAs, Kailash Patil and Nitin Deshmukh returned to Mumbai today. They were garlanded, they were put, shawls were thrown on their heads. They were felicitated as they returned from Gohati to Mumbai, claiming that they were kidnapped by the Shinde camp and forcibly taken to Surat in neighboring Gujarat. Kailash Patil claimed that he was trapped and taken to Surat and he also walked a kilometer to run away from there. Nitin Deshmukh in a stunning claim that said he was injected with some chemical and surrounded by 50 policemen when he came into consciousness. However, the Shinde Sena, as we've just shown you, was very quick to counter Udhav Sena's claim, releasing these pictures showing both Kailash Patil and Nitin Deshmukh all smiles while their rebel leader Eknath with their Ek rebel leader Eknath Shinde. Both the rebel MLAs who've now returned obviously had a change of heart. They were also seen signing a letter of support to Eknath Shinde yesterday or smiling in a VIP jet. Well, Sanjay Raut, who is uh, Udhav Thakare's Man Friday, in the middle of all this mess, has claimed that he's in touch with 21 rebel MLAs and they all want to return to Udhav's fold in Mumbai. So who's lying? Who's telling the truth? Which pictures are reality and which pictures are a dishonesty is the big question as this entire Maharashtra Mahabharat enters its final scene. साढ़े सात चा दरबार पंद्रह ते वीस जनानी कुनी माजी कंबर पकड़ ली कुनी माजी पाय पकड़ ली कुनी माजी हाथ पकड़ ली कुनी कैसा ची मान पकड़ ली अनि ये का जनानी माजा धंडा में जोरे ने इंजेक्शन टोसलो जाओ इस मला इंजेक्शन टोसलो तेरे अक्षरशः मला खुरोखुर लड़ आला होता कि आपले मांगा आपले मुलगी है � यानी कौन-कौन प्रकार से आपले लाल इंजेक्शन टोस्ट लो कौन-कौन प्रकार से काय टोस्ट लो मला थोड़ा सा तीतो लड़ आला मैं अक्षर चा लड़ो सुद्धा यानी मंग मला लक्ष्य ताले कि आपला अटैक चा नावा खाली आपला कुटतरी घातपात करना रहे यानी इंजेक्शन देला नंतर मला गुंगी आली यानी अच्छा ठीक यानी नेल हाउस पिटल में दे ये करूं मोती तीता पन्नासक पुलिस बंदोबस्त माजा सेटी होता आईपीएस अधिकारी सुद्धा होते मंजे किती यहाँ मांगो कशा पद्धति न कट कारस्तान भारतीय जनता पार्टी रचता है तेजस्व प्रत्यक्ष उदाहरण तेजस्वी मी पायल हम जस सरकारी संगीत लेके आपले लेक लेक निजाइत से जस ये आपले साहेब बैठना रहे आसमान खाने नंतर वो सही विरार आता माला क्या बात है ये रात जो उड़े काय माइटी नहीं पन शेवरा संपत के लिए आनी पूरा दस दस जाइट दस माया लक्ष्य तैयार है लिकाई तेरी बेगड़ होते हैं यादर में आनी जावेस में गाड़ी तुम पहले अंदर उतरो तेवेस में आम ची मान्य पक्ष प्रमुखांचे संपर्क साला उस दोजी संपर्क साला मोबाइल डिशर रूस रखता था तो बिचारे उत्तर प्रदेश से होते आने उड़ क्यों होते खरा दर्द है माला तेवेस देवदूत मुन्नत बेटले माला मीठा जोर एक सत्ता उत्तर अंदर सिल्क भी सुधा कर ला मीठा ना साइंग लगा मिको ना है फक्त मीठा ना ये उड़ा साइंग लगे मैं आर्थर नहीं था है माला तुम्हीं मोबाइल डिशन क्य now, this power tussle has come to a breaking point. That appears to be pretty certain now. The only confusion is what's going to happen next. Who's going to stake claim? Will there be a floor test? How does this, how do the chips finally settle in Maharashtra? That's what the people of Maharashtra especially want to know. Now, the Eknath Shinde rebel clan continues to gain momentum and grow in strength, as you can see in these images that India Today accessed first, flaunting the entire band of 42 rebel MLAs, including seven independents. The numbers of the Shiv Sena, the Shinde Sena rather, are just swelling as four more Maharashtra MLAs have joined the rebel faction after landing in Guwahati. They're all seen in those pictures. Now, the presence of 35 direct Shiv Sena rebels, including Eknath Shinde and seven independent MLAs, was witnessed at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Guwahati. That's the image you're looking at. In that video, from Guwahati, inside the hotel, inside of what appears to be some kind of banquet hall, all of these rebel Maharashtra MLAs, including Eknath Shinde, were seen sitting together and raising slogans of Shinde Saab, Tum Aage Badho, Tham Tumare Saath Hai. Well, this clearly projects a view that Udhav Thakare is left with the support of just 13 MLAs, including his own son, Aditya Thakare. Meanwhile, 
Shivsena MP and Udhav's Man Friday, Sanjay Raut, has claimed that 21 rebel MLAs are in touch with the party and wish to return to the Udhav fold. 21 out of the 42 that you've seen in those images. Now, during a press conference, the Shiv Sena's MLAs, Kailash Patil and Nitin Deshmukh, also claimed that they were forcibly taken to a resort in Gujarat's Surat. <laughs> प्रत्येक खेलताना जेवताना खाताना पिताना पण ज्या दिवशी ते मुंबईला येतील त्या दिवशी त्यांनी एकवीस आमदार हे शिवसेनेचे असतील या सगळ्यांशी माननीय उद्धव ठाकरे यांच्याशी व्यवस्थित संपर्क आणि चर्चा झालेली आहे ते त्यातले एक जण सुरतवरून आलेले आहेत आणि दुसरे गुवाहाटीवरून आले आणि इथे येताना त्यांना जो संघर्ष करावा लागला विरुद्ध करावा लागला ती जोखीम पत्करावी लागली ती संपूर्ण कहाणी थरारक आणि रोमांचक आहे कोणत्या पद्धतीनं शिवसेनेच्या आमदारांना अपहरण करून फसवून आपल्या कब्जात भाजपने नेलंय मी उल्लेख फक्त भाजपचाच करतोय नेलं now let's show you what the final battle plan of all these factions at this point of time really is. Now you're probably wondering what are the five factions that I'm talking about right now in our coverage. Let's try and show you. Now you've got the defenders, that is the Udhav Sena. The main, the main uh, priority right now for them is to stop further defections try to bring back the rebels who are sitting in Guwahati. They claim to be in touch with 21. We don't know if that's true. Stop the recognition of the Shinde Sena as the main opposition here. And to also legally challenge defections in court if it comes to that. And finally, ensure that like the MLAs, hopefully the MPs will also not dump the Udhav Sena is the big, the big priority for the for the defenders, because these are the guys who are in power right now. Now let's go to the ally, which is the Pawar faction. Now the Pawar faction's priority right now is to keep the NCP flock together, because if they start crumbling now, then game over will happen much sooner. Now they are preparing for defeat and a political crisis. Pawar has even shared that with his own flock. But he needs to maintain a united front with Udhav, which he's doing on the face of it. What's happening behind closed doors is probably a different story. Now, the rebels, let's go to the Shinde Sena. Shinde Sena is sitting in Gohati right now. These are the rebels, the rebel force, as it were, which wants to claim power in Mumbai. They want to lure more people, MLAs and MPs from the Udhav Sena. They would like to stake claim as the main opposition with numbers. That's why they want to meet the governor. And their third strategy in their battle plan is join forces with the BJP finally to join and form the government. Now let's go to the rival force. The rival force, of course, is the BJP, which has been conspicuously silent through all of this. But obviously, the BJP has a role to play in what's going on. The fadnavis led BJP is the rival force or the rival army. They need to prevent... Shinde Sena from doing a U-turn. They need to protect Shinde and his band of rebel MLAs from Udhav Takre's feelers coming in from Mumbai. Remember, Udhav says he's in touch with at least 21 of these rebel MLAs. The BJP needs to ensure the support of all the rebels. There needs to be no change of heart at the last minute is what the BJP's battle plan is. And finally, bring down the Udhav Aghadi government. And last but not least is the Congress party. The Congress party has a sizable number of MLAs in, in, in Maharashtra. They're not a small player in Maharashtra. However, they appear to be a powerless spectator in this entire unfolding drama because their entire attention is focused on Enforcement Directorate and Rahul Gandhi. So there's not much action, as it were, from the Congress party, even though they've just held an emergency meeting. Their priority is going to be no choice but to wait and watch because they've got zero leverage in what's unfolding right now. It's all happening between BJP and Shiv Sena and these two factions right now. But their priority will be to keep the flock together. So those are the main things that are taking place right now. The battle plan of the five different factions. The Udhav Sena, the Shinde Sena, the NCP, the BJP 
and the Congress party. That's the reason why we were talking about the five different camps. Joining me live now is our consulting editor, Rajdeep Sardesai, India's number one political uh, reporter and editor and someone who uh, perhaps knows more about Maharashtra politics than most. Uh, Rajdeep, welcome. You know, is it endgame, Udhav, now? Shinde has posed with 42 rebels. You've seen those viral pictures. He claims three more are in Mumbai at this point of time. Is this collapse, you know, imminent? Is the is game over now a kind of foregone conclusion for the Agadi Sarkar? Well, let me say that uh, in the first instance, uh, one is always hesitant to say end game, especially in the volatile, turbulent world that Maharashtra's politics has become in recent times. But yes, it appears that this government is slowly but surely on its way out. The exit door seems to be opening slowly, particularly now that uh, Ekna Chinde has shown that he has the support of more than 40 MLAs, including at least uh, 35 uh, Shiv Sena MLAs. And that number could go up and cross that magic figure of 37. Uh, as of now, only about 15 MLAs seem to be firmly in the Uddhav Thakre camp out of the 55. So purely in terms of numbers, advantage to Ekna Chinde and the rebel group who are in a position now to break the Shiv Sena uh, without attracting the anti-defection provisions that require two-thirds of the legislature party to break. And once they decide to take the next step of really challenging the Uddhav Thakre government to prove its vote of confidence, then you would say that the fall of this government is imminent. What you are seeing at the moment is the politics of cat and mouse or brinkmanship with Sanjay Raut, Uddhav Thakre's aide, daring the MLAs to first come to Mumbai and then discuss any possibility of withdrawing from this MBA government, which is a demand of the Eknath Shinde camp. And the Eknath Shinde camp telling the Uddhav Thakre camp, first withdraw support or break away from the NCP and Congress, and then we can take the next move. So in this game of brinkmanship, particularly the Uddhav Thakre camp is trying to buy time, in my view, yeah. and... Finally, it could well be on the floor of the House that the government falls. Although there is one view within the Shiv Sena that Uddhav Thakre should be ready to hand over his resignation in the knowledge that he has lost the support of the majority of the Sena MLAs. There's that hmm. small possibility that the Uddhav camp is still counting on that once the MLAs come from Guwahati to Mumbai, things could change and at least a dozen to maybe even 15, 16 may have a change of heart once yeah, they are yeah. confronted. Uh, with their own constituents, the Shiv Sena rank and file. But I think it's a small hope. But as they say, Umid par dunya kaim hai. So the Uddhav Thakre camp is living on hope, while the Ekna Chinde camp seems to be jubilant and has all the momentum with it. R R R Rajdeep, but what happens next? You know, in the immediate hours, immediate minutes and hours of this, you know, rapidly shape shifting story. Are, are you seeing the BJP forming the government, well, you know, with Fadnavis as chief minister and Shinde as a deputy chief minister? Well, you're asking me what shape this government will take. Now, yeah. one possibility and the most likely possibility is Devendra Fadnavis, who has stayed completely silent, but I am told is choreographing this operation from behind, is waiting to pounce. The moment uh, Eknath Shinde is completely confident of his MLAs and a confidence vote is called, uh, Devendra Fadnavis will, I'm sure, reveal his cards and he wants to therefore revive the original BJP Sena alliance, possibly minus Uddhav Thakre this time, uh, and uh, thereby become chief minister and maybe offer Eknath Shinde deputy chief minister. That's the most likely scenario. A second possibility is of Eknath Shinde's uh, group merging with the BJP, but that's a remote possibility at the moment. So far, Eknath Shinde is claiming that he's the real Chip Sena, so uh, doesn't want to merge with the BJP, wants to maintain his identity. And the third possibility uh, is the possibility of President's rule being called because there is a section of the BJP which believes that this Jod Todki Rajniti has limited uh, advantage and eventually the BJP should be in a position to go back to the electorate and demand a majority of its own in Maharashtra. But that will only happen if this becomes a prolonged battle. As of now, possibility number one seems most likely. Devendra Fadnavis, Chief Minister, Eknath Chinde, Deputy Chief Minister. And then, of course, 
there is the fourth and final possibility that all these MLA, at least a section of these MLAs, return uh, to the Thakre. Uh, doesn't look like happening for now. It appears that the MBA government is clearly on ventilator and is looking more and more. Uh, it's looking more and more difficult uh, for Matoshri uh, to pull this one off. Is it the Maha Ventilator Aghadi in that case, taking from the word that you've used? Rajdeep, appreciate that perspective, unmatched, as we watch this, uh, you know, what appears to be the final final scene, uh, you know, for the Aghadi Sarkar. We're going to keep it, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep bringing you in, Rajdeep, on this shape-shifting story, because it really is moving so, so quickly. We've got some breaking news coming in now from that third camp, the Sharad Pawar party. Sharad Pawar is meeting with his party MLAs and MPs in South Mumbai as we speak. That critical emergency meeting has just begun. Sharad Pawar, his nephew Ajit Pawar, senior leaders Chagan Bujbal, Jitendra Awad and many others are attending this meeting. Sharad Pawar, remember a short while ago, had you know dropped a bombshell when he was meeting senior leaders when he said, prepare for political struggle if we lose power, if the you know, if this government falls, prepare for political struggle. So, in many ways, Sharad Pawar already signalling or conceding that defeat is a possibility. Now, big top-level meeting between Pawar, you know, easily seen as the most powerful politician in Maharashtra at this time, along with his MPs and MLAs, including his nephew, Ajit Pawar. So, big, big movements taking place in Mumbai for the third day running. Remember, it was day before yesterday that India Today broke the story early in the morning and look how far it's come. There is hardly a moment when a big emergency meeting is not being called because every minute counts right now. The NCP under Sharad Pawar is going to be hoping to keep its flock together. There's been a total breakdown of trust between Sharad Pawar's party and Udhav Thakre. Each party, the three parties that make up the Maha Vikas Aghadi are looking to keep their flocks united. The Shiv Sena is broken and bruised. The NCP and the Congress are hoping that they are able to stay united at this point of time. So big meeting by Sharad Pawar with his people has just begun in South Mumbai. Let's go across to uh, uh, India today's Ritwik Bhalekar, who is outside the NCP office in Mumbai. We have uh, we have Vidya, who is outside Matushri, which is the Thakre residence. And we have Polami Saha live from the Radisson Blue Hotel in Guwahati, Assam, the other end of the country, where the rebel Sena is currently digging in its heels and waiting to move in for the kill. Uh, Vidya, quickly want to come to you first. Uh, 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 the NCP under Sharad Pawar is going to be holding a meeting very shortly or that meeting has already begun. Can you give us some sense of what's happening at that meeting? What is this about? Because it comes just shortly after Sharad Pawar said prepare for political struggle where he sounded like he was, you know, preparing his people for exiting government. Uh, well, it is certainly. If you look at the numbers that the, the that are against the Shiv Sena right now, that is led by Uddhav Thakre, it certainly is very clear that uh, the MVA government is actually, as uh, Rajdeep put it, is a ventilator. Uh, you know, it's not really uh, uh, f the numbers do not fall in the uh, you know. Uh, on the side of Uddhav Thakre and that's the reason why uh, uh, you know the uh, parties are preparing themselves also uh, remember though Sharad Pawar might say that we are, it's an internal issue of shifts and we might have nothing to do with it but remember it is on this that the stake of the entire government, the MBA, is dependent on. So internally, they have been trying to see that if they can help the Shem Sena in any way, but uh, nothing really much happening with uh, the kind of security that we have seen in Guwahati, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the distance that it is from here. So not much that, uh, you know, and remember, neither the Shiv Sena nor the NCP really have much base. The Congress does have, but they have also been not really been help that much helpful to the MBA, uh, to the Shiv Sena right here. So that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, most of these people, uh, especially the NCP, say that uh, 
the it's near end game not end game as yet though until and unless uddhav thakre uh, just waves off her hands and says i'm giving up until then there is no end game and that's one of the reasons why when sanjay raut is holding meetings he is trying to say that he he does have the figures though i'm sure uh, none of the parties actually have the uh, have been speaking the original figures but whatever they have been saying they do stake a claim that they will be able to form a government with the mba on this side or with the bjp as shinde has been saying either way someone has to make a move since none of them are making this move yeah. it does seem like that numbers are not in anyone's favor as yet it's incredible rithvik you know does does sharad pawar's party have any aces up its sleeve uh, you know the the perspective from outside maharashtra is sharad pawar is always a few steps ahead of everyone he always knows what's going on this time it looks like even he was caught off guard Yes, absolutely. The meeting of NCP leaders and all the ministers, all the senior leaders, has just begun, and we just saw a few minutes uh, uh, ago, uh, Prafulla Patel, the senior leader, just left somewhere. He said, uh, "I'll be back in half an hour." But everyone is wondering that all the leaders are sitting here in a meeting in YB Chavan Center. Even Sharad Pawar is sitting, and he is addressing the meeting. And uh, where did uh, Prafulla Patel has gone? Uh, he'll be coming back in uh, an half an hour. but uh, it is a very important meeting very crucial meeting uh, 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 on the background of the rapid turn of political events which is happening in mumbai because this is the first uh, full fledged meeting by ncp addressed by sharad pawar till now uh, uh, in last two days we didn't see sharad pawar uh, coming on to the ground and taking over the charge the way we saw it in 2019 in 2019 we saw how in uh, just 3 days in 80 hours uh, the government which was made by his nephew and then minister uh, ajit pawar uh, who was uh, uh, who took oath as deputy uh, chief minister of maharashtra with uh, cm Dev, uh, devendra fadnavis he uh, wrestled back all the mlas he was uh, monitoring the situation very closely and he toppled that government in 80 hours and he took over the charge and he formed uh, mva alliance which is running in maharashtra for last two and a half years but mm. now the situation is not like that because we are watching uh, one after another shiv sena mlas is leaving mumbai they are flying to guwahati uh, videos are coming in bites are coming in uh, there are so many allegations which are being made through letters through uh, video bites uh, through true. twitter accounts uh, and uh, in this bull scenario we can just see uddhav is all he is doing is he is uh, showing a, a show of emotional play but now on the ground sharad pawar has uh, come and he has uh, started uh, taking all the charge in his hmm. hand is addressing uh, all the ncp mlas and it is needed to be seen that uh, what will uh, ncp take stand in uh, this whole scenario okay because for the first time and i have to say this sharad pawar is looking like he doesn't hold all the cards he he's he's a man who never gives away what he's thinking what his strategy is but he never looks rattled he certainly never looked rattled at his press conference as well but the words that he's using the fact that he hasn't said very much saying things as incredulous says this is an internal matter of the shiv sena all betray a certain sense of alarm which is uh, uncharacteristic if i can put it that way uh, for sharad pawar let's take you straight across the country to polomi saha who's been staking it out outside the radisson blue hotel in guwahati which i dare say is now the uh, you know the the the, the, the political uh, ho uh, hot spot of guwahati at this point of time uh, polobi the the simple question there there are so many questions to ask i don't really know where to start but let's start with the simplest of them all uh they've shown the pictures the shinde sena has flaunted its strength you know nice big photo op that's gone viral everyone's looking at those pictures and you know counting the heads 42 in all when you know when are these numbers going to be put to work you know when is the governor going to be approached or you know procedurally when are they going to make that move 
Well, uh, Shiv, uh, the fact is uh, that they have the numbers already. They yeah. already are past the halfway mark if uh, we include the support of the three MLAs uh, that we're speaking of uh, since the morning, who are, of course, not here in Guwahati, but have, in fact, pledged their support to Iknal Shinde. Unless they have some sort of a change of mind, uh, then, of course, uh, things uh, will play out very differently. But as far as the Iknal Shinde camp is concerned, they're looking at a good, sizable chunk of MLAs. Okay, Aja, 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 I'll request you to please... We're getting some action over here, Shiv. We're getting some movement over here. More MLS, Shiv. Uh, we're bringing to you live these pictures that are coming in from uh, outside Radisson Hotel, Radisson Blue Hotel. We're trying to see if there are there are any more of these uh, leaders who are in fact uh, going in. Kesarkar seems to be back, is it? Uh, that, that was Deepa Kesarkar, who in fact uh, had stepped out for a short while, who seems to have uh, come back. There was always a lot of speculation as to where he had headed out. Uh, some said he was in fact uh, headed to the Kamakya temple. He is a big Kamakya bhakt, and that is why he in fact had gone uh, towards the temple. So Deepa Kesarkar, who is one of the new joinees, so to say, who came in earlier this morning, has uh, returned uh, to the hotel. Uh, coming back to what you were saying, uh, Shiv, earlier. Now, this obviously, um, uh, he seems to have the numbers on paper, but he's not going to stop at that. He needs to ensure that everyone stays together as a flock, and he's going to try and take that number beyond the halfway mark. Because if you just stop at 37, and even if one or two change their mind, then the entire uh, operation, so to say, quote unquote, that you're trying to pull off over here, falls apart. So he is going to try and see uh, if he can get more MLAs on board. He has been, of course, claiming that he can bring many more on board and there will be many more who will be completely um, uh, completely disaffected. Uh, Shiv Senik's disenchanted with how uh, the Shiv Sena of Balasaheb Thakre is functioning, will uh, join him. So uh, to give a certain timeline to this, this could be about uh, another 24 to 48 hours uh, that, I, uh, that I seem uh, to think that this could possibly wrap up within at least here in Guwahati, Shiv. Polami, you know what, uh, the, the, the Sanjay Raut, San, Sanjay Raut and team in Mumbai are sitting and saying that at least half of the people in that picture are in touch with the, you know, the head office back home, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, which is a huge claim to make because that's like a game changer. Uh, any, 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 uh, you know, clarifications of any kind coming in from inside? You know, I know that nobody is going to give away the reality, but any sense you're getting that ki baatchit ho rahi hai with Mumbai? Well, uh, as far as the rebel camp is concerned, obviously it has been claimed uh, by uh, Sanjay Raut, by Udhav Thakre and others as well that they're constantly talking to Eknath Shinde, to the rebel camp as well. Uh, there can be no doubt about it, Shiv, uh, that there are conversations that are happening. But at the moment, if you can see in terms of countering those allegations, uh, Sanjay Raut, of course, saying that 21 MLAs uh, who are part of uh, this jamboree over here behind me at the Radisson Blue Hotel are those who have been forced to compel uh, to in fact uh, join this gang but the fact of the matter is here they were in that photo op uh, that everyone saw 42 MLA's uh, Shiv Sena and independence included so that was a message that was a response that the Eknal Shinde camp was sending out to the Udhav Thakre uh, camp the fact of the matter is that there are MLA's in batches of three and four Shiv who've been coming in since yesterday evening there was that massive big lot that came in of 29 Shiv Senics and uh, a few others uh, earlier from Surat but after that there have been batches of three and four are you forcing three and four uh, batches of three and four to in fact come all the way to Guwahati that is a little implausible to understand because these are MLAs who are driving down from Mumbai to Surat and from Surat they're staying the night in the Lee Meridian Hotel in Surat taking the first charter out from Surat Airport landing here in uh, Guwahati in uh, the wee hours of the morning so they are these are they are coming in since last evening in batches of threes and four you cannot say that you are forcing them and bringing them on gunpoint here uh, to Guwahati in batches of threes and fours. Shiv. Very good point. I mean, you know, this whole this whole narrative of MLAs being forced, uh, you know, appears to be a little iffy considering they're all smiling. We've got more breaking news. Paul, let me stay with me. More breaking news coming in. Udhav Thakre's lieutenant, his right-hand man, Sanjay Raut, has just tweeted, discussions can lead the way. There can be discussion. The doors of the house are open. Why does the forest wander? Let's decide with self-respect rather than slavery, Jai Maharashtra.
Amazing, amazing, shape-shifting narrative, breaking first and exclusive here on India today. Sanjay Raut tweeting in Marathi, of course, saying, discussions are possible, ghar a jao, let's have baat and settle this matter. The words of the Udhav Sena that has been cornered as far as numbers are concerned and that's why a conciliatory tone after first you know appearing to threaten the rebel MLAs saying if you don't come back you'll be disqualified if you don't attend this meeting you are being kicked out of the Shiv Sena now the Udhav Sena has decided to strike a softer tone a more conciliatory tone a more emotional tone and say let's talk about it come back home let's talk about it this is very very interesting ladies and gentlemen the entire the entire tone and tenor with which sanjay raut and udhav takre have handled this has remarkably softened over the last few hours remember the udhav sena had flaunted two mlas who had allegedly been kidnapped and taken to gohati after the Shinde rebel camp had exposed that claim, showing pictures of them smiling in Gohati, now you've got the Udhav Sena making its next move and it's a very, very conciliatory move. Remember, this is the same Sanjay Raut who just a couple of hours ago saying, we are ready to leave the Maha Vikas Aghadi government as long as these MLAs come back, come back to Mumbai. We will get out of government. Now he says, Come back, let's talk. So this is a situation and a story that is really, really changing very, very rapidly. Do we have Vidya with us? We have Vidya with us. Let's get her perspective on this. Vidya, softer tone being used right now, visibly by the Udhav Sena. Sanjay Raut saying, you know, Mandar, it's gone from talk. if you guys don't come back, you are in trouble, to please come back, let's talk. Uh, well, uh, Shiv, I am actually going to speak to some of the Shiv Sainics right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, try to get their sentiments to find out what exactly they have to say. Uh, they have been standing here since some time now. Why are you here? We are standing here with the main minister, Uddhav Sahib. We are standing here for them. And we are standing here for our mother's house. And what do they want to say about them? What do जिन्हें गद्दारी करनी थी गद्दारी की जो भगोड़े थे भगोड़े भाग गए और उनसे हमारा कुछ लेना देना नहीं हमारा जो शिवसैनिक है वो आम पब्लिक में का शिवसैनिक है गरीबों का शिवसैनिक है उद्धव सर को हम सपोर्ट करने के लिए यहाँ पर खड़े हैं किस चीज का इंतजार यहाँ उनका एक तो आने का इंतजार कर रहे जो भाग के गए है जिन्होंने गद्दारी की शिवसेना से उनका इंतजार कर रहे और हमें आशा है कि उनमें से बहुत सारे एमएलए वापस शुशर में आएंगे माफ किया जाएगा वो लोग जो वापस आएंगे वो तो उनके जो जो भी डिसीजन है वो उद्धव साहब लेंगे वो तो हम डिसीजन लेंगे लेकिन आपका क्या माना आपका मत क्या नहीं वो एक बार चले गए उनके जो दिल से निकल गए उनकी जगह फिर दिल, दिल में नहीं होती ऐसा शिव सैनिक होता है इससे पहले भी ऐसा ही हुआ है जब लोग छोड़ के तो उनकी जीरो जीरो वैल्यू है ना शिवसेना हमारे दिल में जो कॉमन शिवसैनिक है उसके दिल में जो भगोड़े के थे जो चले गए हैं उनके उनके लिए हमारे दिल में कुछ भी जगह नहीं है Shiv, that's the sentiment here. Most of the people on the ground are extremely upset with what's happening. Uh, quite a few of them actually even do not know what to do. And they're waiting for Udhav Thakri to say something to them so that they can actually take it forward. But at this juncture, most of the Shiv Sainik's quite upset with what is happening in the party and uh, mostly feel that they should come back, whether be it with the MVA, be it with the BJP, whichever it is. It is Udhav Thakri who should be taking the decision, not any other MLA or any other person from, um, you know, Maharashtra. So that's the sentiment of most of the Shiv Sainiks here who are right now waiting outside Matoshri. So, you know, the big question, Vidya, of course, is going to be what's going to happen once these MLAs return? They show no sign of wanting to return immediately because many things are uncertain for them as well. The anger of the Shiv Sainiks, uh, you know, is a famous thing that must also be weighing on their minds. So they need to get all the assurances Everything needs to be tied up before, I guess, they get onto that plane and return to Mumbai. Stay with me, Vidya. Uh, you know, I want to show people what that viral image 
actually looked like. The entire Shinde Sena captured in one single frame. Take a look. This is the, this is the Shinde Sena right here. This is the Shinde Sena here right now. All 42 of them captured in one single frame. Because there had been so much talk about the numbers, viewer. There had been so much talk about, no, it's not 42, it's less than that. There are only a few Shiv Sena. Not all of them are actually owing allegiance to, uh, uh, to Eknath Shinde. But this photo op perhaps told the Eknath Shinde Sena story more than anything else. And that's why you've got all of these 42 people, including some women MLAs there. All of these people are right now inside that Gohati hotel and these are the people who will be put to work to prove those numbers. Now, the Shiv Sena, that is the Udhav Sena, the original Shiv Sena, which is the Udhav Sena, claims that 21 of the people here, we don't know who they are, but 21 of the people here are still in touch with the mothership in Mumbai. They're still in touch with Matushri. They are still deciding on whether they want to owe allegiance to Eknath Shinde and bring down the Udav government or whether they want to fly back home to Mumbai. But as things stand right now, viewer, this is what the Shinde Sena looks like. The BJP is in the background, but the Shinde Sena is what could bring down the Udhav government. That's what we are looking at right now. Let's go across to our reporters who continue to be with us. Uh, just going to get a sense of who all we have with us. We've got Vidya. We've got Ritwik, who's still with us. We've got Polomi as well. Ritwik, quickly bringing you in on this. The, you know, the Shinde Sena has become like the catchphrase now, that the Shiv Sena appears to have been split wide open. Uh, the NCP, you know, the NCP's official view of all this is that this is a internal matter of the Shiv Sena, which is, which is something that could not be further from the truth, because what is happening right now will affect the NCP no matter which way you slice it. And that's what this big meeting happening with Sharad Pawar is about, Ritwik. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. The meeting uh, is for uh, to convey to the uh, their own MLAs, uh, the NCP MLAs, and to keep their flock intact. Uh, they don't want uh, uh, they don't want their MLAs to be in trouble. They don't want anyone else contacting their MLAs. At the same time, they also want to ensure that even if uh, Shiv Sena has split in uh, parts, uh, uh, the major chunk of Shiv Sena has now. It is very evident has flown away to Guwahati and they are not coming back. The tweet of Sanjay Raut says it all. Uh, the tone of the tweet says it all because we know how Sanjay Raut tweets uh, every time. There's a shero shairi and there's anecdotes and there's always a challenge. But this tweet of Sanjay Raut is very unlikely of him. Uh, it is uh, literally, literally, it is uh, asking them to come back and it looks like a last resort of Shiv Sena of uh, uh, appealing their MLAs to come back. But at the same time, it is happening. The tweet is coming when NCP meeting is happening and in some time, I think a uh uh, Congress meeting has also begun uh, at Sayadri Guest House. Both the allies are having their meetings with their own MLAs and at this time, uh, the Sanjay Raut has tweeted, uh, this uh, clearly means that uh, they are trying the last resort to uh, uh, strike yeah. a contact, strike communication with okay. their MLAs and try to convince them. But Ritwik, stay with me. Not Ritwik, stay with me. I want to I show, show our viewers you know, how the numbers have changed because the numbers have not been staying steady. There have been lots of claims and counterclaims, but look at how these numbers have changed. This is how the Shinde Sena went from 34 to 42. They were originally at 35 at the Leh Meridian in Surat in Gujarat. Two days later, today at the Radisson Blue, Guwahati, there are 42 rebels. It's gone from 34 two days ago to 42 now. And that has completely changed the game. Two days, Tuesday is the day India Today broke the story. In the morning, 36 minutes before everyone else. Two days later, cut to Gohati. Thursday, 42 is that number. They've got the numbers to bring the government down. When does the actual axe fall on the Udhav government? Depends on many things and many loose ends for the Shinde Sena and the BJP that are obviously taking place at this point of time. The BJP, you all will be wondering, has been stunningly silent through it all. Let's get a word in from Polomi, who's at the Radisson Blue Hotel in, uh, in Guwahati. Uh, uh, Polomi, no word from Devendra Fadnavis 
no word from any senior BJP leader. Uh, you know, obviously, they, you know, there's a wait and watch, which is a very nice, uh, gentle way of saying uh, that you know, they, they, they're standing on the sidelines waiting for the kill. What are you picking up from the BJP grapevine, Polomi, about how they see this playing out? Shiv, BJP cannot uh, ignore the fact or cannot uh, deny the fact that they are a stakeholder in yeah. what is happening at the moment and a prominent stakeholder at that. They are, of course, going to say that we're in a wait and watch mode and we're, uh, you know, watching the developments very carefully. But they are, of course, making their calculations uh, as well as we speak. Devendra Fadnavis may have been a very silent player in this entire episode since the night when uh, the BJP pulled off uh, this coup in the MLC elections when Devendra Fadnav spoke about the BJP's five-candidate uh, win in the election, he has not spoken at all. He has been inside his residence in Mumbai, constantly meeting people, including independent MLAs as well. So he is strategizing. He's putting together his numbers. BJP, of course, has a sizable chunk of uh, MLAs in the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly. They stand at 106, but he is trying to get the support of others as well. Not just independents who've already pledged their support. There are 13 independents in the Maharashtra Legislative of assembly, not just those that have already uh, pledged their support to the BJP. We believe originally five pledged their support to the BJP. There are others today as well. An independent MLA walked into mm. Devendra Fadnavis's residence who had earlier pledged uh, her support to the Shiv Sena. So the BJP is working out the numbers at the moment and is waiting for Eknath Shinde to cross the 37 mark and comfortably at that before they go for the kill in any manner possible. They would like to form government. They would like to go in for two and a half years of governance. Uh, uh, I do not hear much uh, from the BJP camp as to uh, them being ready to go into fresh polls at the moment. So they would like to be able to form government and that is what they're working at at the moment. But something which they have uh, in terms of it being absolutely solid, they do not want the embarrassment of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Devendra Fadnavis was sworn in as chief minister for three days in total. You know, the, the, the big, the bitter lessons of 2019 for all sides, you know, first with what happened with Ajit Pawar, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, being caught off guard by the BJP and Ajit Pawar, and then, uh, you know, finally being able to form the government is all going to weigh on the all the stakeholders who are now holding ropes at both ends of the country, in Mumbai and in Guwahati right now. You know, let's not kid ourselves. The BJP is the you know is the force behind what's taking place right now they may not say that they are they may not they may say that this is a wait and watch policy but this is heading towards a bjp led government in maharashtra once again let's also not forget that the bjp was the single largest party in the 2019 election which is why they see the entire mahavikas aghadi of these three smaller parties as a betrayal, especially since the Shiv Sena had fought that election along with the BJP as allies. Words that has been playing out, intensifying and escalating right through today between Udhav Thakre and the rebel rebel Sena that's sitting in Gohati. This is a war of words that has gotten very, very ugly, but it has escalated quite dramatically. And let's show you how it's happened. Udhav Thakre first said that he, he, you know, when he moved, I'm moving out of Varsha, he said in a very emotional claim, he said, I'm feeling betrayed by my own people. But the reply came, why were we, why are we being humiliated? We are the ones who are being humiliated, says the Eknath Shinde clan. Let Shinde come and talk, says Udhav Thakre. I'm the boss. Come and talk to me. He says, didn't have access to the mantralaya all this while. Now you are suddenly saying, come and talk to us, you know, when the crisis has hit the fan. Not interested in power, says Udhav Thakre. You know, where have we heard that before? Eknath Shinde says, I was, you know, we were elected by three to four lakh people. What do you mean by not interested in power? Then you've got... Udhav Thakre, who said Hindutva is in the Shiv Sena's soul. The Eknath Shinde faction, which has been trending Hindutva forever on social media, says, we weren't allowed to visit Ayodhya even when your own son, Aditya Thakre, went to Ayodhya. Why were we not allowed to go to Ayodhya? So this is a situation that is going to continue to escalate. It's day three since this story was broken, and it has 
show no signs of calming down. One way or the other, it's going to be end game. Is it going to be end game Udhav or end game Shinde is the big question. But if you're looking at the numbers most brutally, the end game appears to be Udhav's. The question is, when is it going to happen and in what form? Our coverage continues on the other side of this very short break. Remember those numbers coming right back. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com or call 9999892171. busy finding what's trending you're busy finding out why India today for those who research before reacting download the India today app now make your media plan smarter with India today live TV on your connected devices amplify your brand with hundred million smart internet viewers to advertise mail us at sales at arjtag.com <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
A team of German and Kurdish archaeologists has uncovered the city in Iraq, which is believed to have been an important power center from the Mitanni Empire era. The city was submerged decades ago. Iraq is one of the countries in the world most affected by climate change. The settlement emerged from the waters of the Mosul Reservoir early this year as water levels fell rapidly due to extreme drought in Iraq. Researchers succeeded in largely mapping the city, finding a palace. Several large buildings were also uncovered. A massive fortification with walls and towers and an industrial complex was also found. The research team was stunned by the well-preserved state of the walls, sometimes to a height of even several meters. Despite the fact that the walls are made of sun-dried mud bricks and were underwater for more than 40 years. This good preservation is due to the fact that the city was destroyed in an earthquake around 1350 BC, during which the collapsing upper parts of the walls buried the buildings. The discovery of five ceramic vessels that contained an archive of over 100 cuneiform tablets stunned the researchers. Cuneiform tablets were logosyllabic scripts used to write several languages during the Bronze Age. To avert further damage to the important site by the rising water, the excavated buildings were completely covered with tight-fitting plastic sheeting. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You Я думаю, що втрати будуть великі. По-перше, це втрати по врожайності, по-друге, це баланс втрати по грошах, бо сьогодні немає експерта, немає куди вивозити, немає реалізації зерна саме. І це дуже скажеться на всіх подальших, адже для того, щоб... Але зараз, по-перше, не можна здати зерно, немає таких коштів, щоб це робити. І, по-друге, спеціалісти, які зазвичай це роблять, не базуються в Миколаївській області. І, ну, і ми дуже недалеко від зони обстрілів, і тому ну, доволі таки нема бажаючих їхати. Co-powered by introducing Motorola Edge 30. Co-powered by Philips Beard Trimmer adapts to you. In association with LIC Harpal Apke Saath. Apollo 24-7. Download now. NetMeds India Ki Apni Pharmacy. SBI pre-approved personal loan in just four clicks. Geomart Har Ghar Ka Mart.
Shinde Sena is locked, loaded and leading. And Udhav Sena, meanwhile, is in a free fall. Up tak 42 for the Shinde Shiv Sena. But the question will be, Mumbai ka king hai kaun? Top focus at 6 p.m. prime. Aptak Bayalis for the Shiv Sena led by Eknath Shinde but the number is only increasing and we have a big breaking news now coming in that the Shinde Sena numbers continue beyond 42 because now two more MLAs have landed in Guwahati. Two more members of Legislative Assembly will be now sitting with the group that you see here led by Eknath Shinde. So who are the two MLAs? Dada Bhuse and Sanjay Rathor have reached Guwahati from Mumbai. Sena MLC Ravindra Pathak accompanying these two MLAs. But here where there is the biggest twist and turn that you are getting updated with at 6 p.m. prime. One of these men who have reached Guwahati from Mumbai were actually a messenger from Udav Thakre. They were initially deployed to placate the rebel MLAs. Today, they have joined the Shinde Sena, landed in Guwahati. Is this end game, Udhav, that we are looking at? Let's go across directly to Mumbai. My colleague Mausami Singh tracking all the latest on that. Uh, you are outside Mausami, Udhav Thakare's ancestral home residence, Matoshri, where uh, he has moved now with his family. And two more MLAs go and join Guwahati camp. But what exactly is happening? Because now it appears Udhav Thakare and free fall of all his netas one by one. Absolutely, Pooja. You know, time has really run out uh, for the MBA government here uh, with the entire uh, flock of Sh Shiv Sena literally uh, now housed in Guwahati except about uh, 12 MLAs that are with the Sena. So this is uh, really a troublesome time uh, for Uddhav Thakre uh, as it was a litmus test of his uh, prowess as a politician. And uh, here you can see that uh, despite the fact that a 24-hour ultimatum was issued today uh, to the MLAs. Uh, the Eknath Chinde camp is absolutely, uh, you know, uh, uh, bolstered by the fact that MLAs after MLAs are joining. I'll, uh, let me show you the pictures of where we are, Pooja. We've just shifted from Matoshri okay. to Shahyadri guest house. And this is where the Congress leaders are meeting. Uh, the Congress leaders are holding a meeting right, uh, right here. They are uh, the third party in this entire alliance and remember that Shiv Sena MP MLAs have actually uh, blamed uh, the alliance for their uh, for uh, the step that they had to uh, they were forced to take they are not happy with the alliance with the Congress and the NCP so here uh, you know Bala Thorat, Nana Patole and all the big wigs in Mumbai are meeting here uh, to consider so what Singh uh, tracking there the Congress huddle that is on and that's not it uh, stay on with me Mosmi because remember Congress and NCP can really just watch and decide what to do next for them. For now, the NCP and the Supremo there, Sharad Pawar, also have held an emergency meeting that in Mumbai. And this has been chaired by Sharad Pawar, what sources in NCP are telling India today now that the NCP is discussing three categorical issues here. Keep a watch over the situation closely, take an appropriate call later. Or there could be another scenario, fight along with the Shiv Sena and as it stands, Sena, that of Udav Thakre, and get back the dissident MLAs. But the bigger question, remember, can they only sit to wait and watch? Can they only stand by Udav Thakre right now, who's losing out all the numbers? Or pull out of the Mahavikas Agari government alliance, and that specifically after Sanjay Raut's statement and looking at the political situation in the state. Could the NCP dump the Udav Thakre Shiv Sena right away before the Shiv Sena decides to take a call? Because all of this presently is being discussed within the meeting. Three scenarios, whether to just keep a watch right now. Remember, Sharad Pawar has spoken to Udav Thakre yesterday. 
do they stand by Udav Thakre right now and try to get dissident MLAs? Does not look like so because if Udav Thakre, Aditya Thakre, Sanjay Raut, all the top leaders of Shiv Sena have failed, can the NCP bring back the rebel MLAs? And then whether should they even continue in the alliance as of now? Because given the situation, Shinde one by one is boasting about maximum MLAs on his side. Mosmi Singh on one side tracking all the latest from Congress, NCP, while Polomi, who's right now in Guwahati tracking the rebel MLAs, the Bharatiya Janata Party's plan of action and what does it look like for Udav Thakre. Let's go across first to you, Mosmi, and then I'll quickly go to Polomi as well. So at this point, both the Congress and the NCP are also closely mulling because the numbers are being boasted by none other than Eknath Chinde, who till a few days ago was an important person, but today could be the next big Sena Neta. Absolutely, uh, Pooja, you know, uh, with, uh, with the fact that the Ekna Chinde camp has been uh, targeting the NCP and the Congress, the meeting, uh, there is a buzz behind me, the meeting perhaps about to get over, uh, but uh, let's wait and watch. Uh, in the meanwhile, you know, the NCP and the Congress have been treading very cautiously all the time, reiterating that they are, uh, there you can see that Ashok Chavan is right there. Okay. Um, so they are reiterating that they are very much with the Shiv Sena. It is Shiv Sena's internal matter. They are backing Uddhav Thakre. Uh, and, and you know, the diktat has come right from Delhi with Malika Arjun Kharge saying that, uh, that, uh, that, the, that the Congress will be with the alliance. They are with whatever step Uddhav Thakre takes. And it is the BJP that's trying to destabilize the government. Let's try and get in a reaction from Ashok Chawan as he... Uh, comes out of this Shayadri guest house, uh, even as uh, Bala Sahib Thorat, uh, Prithvi Raj Chawan, and uh, all the other Congress leaders, including Nana Patole, Nitin Raut, are inside. We'll try and get a sense uh, from the from the former Chief Minister of uh, what's actually transpiring. Stay on with me, Mosmi, because from the NCP, I'm now joined by. Majid Neman is joining me on this live telecast. Sir, how is the NCP, do you think, should be looking at this? Should they really wait and watch? Is there no other option? Because can they really get back the rebel MLAs while Udav Thakre has moved back to Matoshri, Mr. Memon? You see, NCP leader Sharad Pawar is a fairly mature, experienced veteran who has had uh, all faced such uh, situations in the past, past 30, 40 years. So this is nothing new for him. He is, I think, the best person among all the political leaders belonging to various constituents of uh, the MBA. So I think he is taking a very cautious stand and is trying to see if the fire could be extinguished to the best of our ability. We are, you see, not interfering into internal affairs of Shiva Sena. But as far as MBA is concerned, the only thing which I personally feel, which I have tweeted, that if Shinde and company feel that there is a departure uh, in behavior of Udav Thakre as far as Hindu is concerned, then why were they quite for two and a half years, almost more than two years? And ironically, they are making this kind of an allegation without any substance, without any base. More particularly when Aditya just visited uh, yes. Ayutthaya. So, uh, very, it's very strange. How do they explain? It means that there is something undercurrent operating and uh, for which probably uh, BJP people are uh, backing it up, it seems. Are you, are you saying, uh, Mr. Memon, could this be a fixed match between the BJP and the Shiv Sena, Udav Thakre included? No, no, see, Udav Thakre has been uh, betrayed by Shinde and his followers, and it has come as a surprise to him. And therefore, we, we had, Shirat Pawarji had already said that we stand with our uh, uh, chief minister. But then it is for the chief minister, to, who is also, hap also happens to be the chief of his party, to uh, keep his heart together. It is for them. We can't interfere into that. Uh, Mr. Majid Mehman, what do you think the NCP would be doing at this point? Could the NCP decide to pull out of the alliance or they will want any such decision if at all comes of Udav Thakre resigning or the coalition perhaps falling out as it appears from these numbers, waiting for either Sanjay Raut, Udav Thakre or an official confirmation to come? Could the NCP be the first to pull the plug? 
what NCP would do would depend upon what the Honorable NCP Chief Shri Sharad Pawar will decide. There can't okay. be any two opinions, there can't be any difference of opinion, there can't be any uh, see, uh, uh, departure from what the NCP Chief would say. It's a disciplined lot. Whatever Sharad Pawar Ji will decide would be followed by NCP. And I am sure that even Congress would follow, they know the weight of uh, Sharad Pawar's opinion in such places. So why have you also... said, as you've uh, put on social media as well, that for two years, these rebel MLAs who are on our screens right now, more than 40, the number is only increasing, did have no problems officially about uh, either no, no. the Hindutva ideology or Udhav Thakre, meet Aditya Thakre in Ayodhya, and suddenly these allegations are coming up. The excuse that is put up by Shinde does not seem to be reasonably and logically acceptable. Okay. Because for two and a half years, everything was fine. Suddenly, this is certainly an indication of some undercurrent operating. Somebody else from outside is uh, pushing him. And uh, we need not name them. Uh, it is very obvious. Do you, do you buy this allegation, sir, which all these rebel MLAs have said, even the resolution letter states, that they were always not in favour of the alliance with the NCP and the Congress? No, no, see, the, as far as the functioning of MBA is concerned for okay. the past over two years, it was absolutely smooth. There were no inter se quibblings, there were no grievances okay. among the three constituents of an, uh, MBA, and suddenly... Within the party, there is a revolt because they, they don't like certain people from the Akre group and then there is another yes. group. So that is their internal very, matter. Very interesting what you are telling us. Uh, Mr. Majid Memon uh, is a former parliamentarian. He's also a top uh, NCP neta. And he's saying that, you know, we'll wait and watch because that's precisely what NCP can do. But he's also saying how are these allegations suddenly cropping up from the rebel camp and is hinting, of course, at the BJP hand here. Let's go across to our reporters on the ground. Our senior executive editor, Sahil Joshi, joins me from Mumbai. Vidya also uh, live outside Udav Thakre's resident Matoshri. Palumi Saha is outside the radio Blue Hotel in Guwahati and we'll be soon joined by Mosami Singh as well. Sahil, over to you first. You know, NCP in a huddle, the Congress party is in a huddle, but that's precisely, that's what they can do with the numbers increasing for Shindeki Sena. Well, uh, what it seems now is that NCP, many NCP ministers and uh, senior leaders are basically saying, uh, you know, that uh, somebody is taking them for a ride. Sanjay Raut making a statement yes. uh, to the rebel uh, Shiv Sena saying that come back, we'll leave MVA 